Okay, I'm going to show you how I remove old studs. And don't go saying I use Croil or some things like that. Oh, I don't do that. I don't use stuff in the cans. I got a better way. An old way to do it. Okay, I'm going to take this torch that I hot rotted. This isn't your normal torch. <laughs> And I'm going to heat up this case right there. Let me point that down and maybe that direction. You can see what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to heat this up. Maybe I can get these two studs out here. Then I'll go for the back too. I took and drilled out the jet in this uh, torch here so it'll really throw some flame. I'm just going to keep heating that up. May take a little while. So I'm basically doing this from, for uh, my own entertainment and uh, the machinists that uh, have been watching me for a long time can find some of this amusing and maybe helpful on other things they do. And my only plans with Harley Davidson in the future is uh, picking up bikes that don't run for dirt cheap, making them run, and then trade them or sell them for something else. But I got to be very careful about that. Because uh, I could get in trouble with the state for selling vehicles without a license. Without a special permit license or whatever. Just like selling used motorcycle parts. They made it a felony if they choose to enforce it and they <laughs> they will on uh, people they don't like and they don't like me. When I was in business, I was approached by two members of the biker gang task force and they actually demanded my uh, list of customers. And I told them they could get it only with a court order. And after that, I had sting after sting. And that was funny, too. Because the cops got all these informants and snitches they caught for dope and other shit. And I'm not a doper. Though I've been slandered as such by the scumbags on the practical machinist. I tell you what, dopers don't have equipment like this or knowledge like this. Now one of the gauges that I'm going to use here is uh, how hot it is is beeswax. When beeswax start melting into that, it's starting to. Beeswax follows heat. Beeswax has a higher flash point than petroleum products. So something like Croil or WD-40 or something like that is the wrong thing to use here. This is a 1953 engine. And these studs have been in there for 72 years. I'm going to see if I can get them out. I certainly wouldn't attempt it cold. This will not hurt the cases. I'd be very careful with an acetylene torch, so that's for darn sure. So I'm watching that beeswax. Keep touching it in. 
And I'm looking for it to bubble a little bit. Let's see, get some on this one. I think it's hot enough. Yeah, it's, yeah, the wax is melting. Yeah. So the cops run all these stings on me. They have their losers come in and try to sell me used parts or make a machine gun part or all kinds of stuff offer me dope. I just said, no, only deal in cash, no used parts. And one of the funny things I found about the snitches is uh, they don't know each other. And I could always tell a snitch back when I had the business is uh, they carried a gun and they let you see it. It's the gun you don't see that will kill you. The ones that show you guns are punks. So uh, the snitches invariably, and I talked about this with other professional mechanics, um, invariably name their cop handler. And they'll go, oh, do you know uh, so-and-so cop? And I go, Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that guy. They'll ask you. So it's fun, you can, you know, you get a couple of snitches, then you can tell one snitch, you go, well, you know, uh, Bill, uh, I think Chuck's a snitch, so look out for him. <laughs> then, then, then Chuck's handler will come into the shop. The cops always come into the shop. Then there's snitches. The way I got it now, I don't deal with any of them. So you got these bike gangs and stuff, and they're just filled with snitches. I kind of get a kick out of watching uh, George Christie videos. And uh, it's sort of like I had a, uh, kind of like a stadium seat, watching the cops and watching, watching the bike, bike club members. It was actually pretty hilarious. And that's one of the things they said at the factory. Run an honest shop, no used parts. You make the customer come up with the parts, and then you sign them into your shop. They can buy the stuff on eBay just as easy. I see, it, I see the wax bubbling a little bit over here. Just bubbling, just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to turn this off, and I think I can get these uh, definitely drilled from behind. So I'll melt some wax behind here into the holes. Yeah. Yeah, see the, it's drilled all the way through there. So I got some wax in front and behind. Let's see if we can get one of those out. There's better stud pullers than this, but this will have to work. Okay, let me get that front one out first. Make sure that's pointing down enough there. And out it comes. I wouldn't try this cold.
Yeah. Okay, there's one. Get this way down here. Get that on that one kind of bend there. See if I can. Oh, add it in the big hole. Coming right out. Here we go. Easy does it there, coming right out. Makes me very, very happy. Yeah, I'm going to uh, because uh, I had to squeeze this together, I have to bore those cylinder openings. And the left case is about thousandths and a half or so taller than uh, the right case. If I can get that out. There we go. Hey, about a 12 minute uh, uh, video and I think that's good enough. People have an attention span of about eight minutes. Okay, I will keep making progress. I got to come up with some uh, fixturing uh, for the rotary table I'm going to mount this to. I can't seem to find uh, the stuff because I haven't done one for almost two decades. So I'll do that and uh, I'll I showed you how to get started. Hey, I'm not in the shop right now. Why don't you check out some images of old uh, machinery? We'll start the slideshow.